Hello and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a good day so far. I had a good day depending on what time it is. Um, and today I wanted to do a video that I needed to make like a month or two ago when I actually got <laughs> these designs made into these acrylic bases to make molds for. But now we're making them. Uh, <laughs> took me a while to get to, but now I'm going to be able to show you me making a mold out of my design. So this is going to be super exciting. Um, we're going to be working with silicone instead of resin today. We're going to be making a mold. Oh, and I didn't show on camera how I took. Um, basically, if you watch the video where I got these, um, the bases and these acrylic um, pieces, it comes with tape basically like this paper tape on it to keep it safe from getting scratches and I took that off off screen but I do have the puppy one I still haven't messed with it and I don't have really a good way of taking it off you can go to the acrylic cottages um, Instagram page and I believe she has a highlight where she tells you how you could take it off if you receive it like this um, because if you order from her, you can also receive it without this tape. It just costs extra. And I figured I could just take it off myself. And I literally just go about like taking it off like if it was tape and I'm trying to just pull it off like that with my fingernail or scratch it off my fingernail. And you just take it off like that. And you want to be careful when you're doing it with your fingernail just because you want to make sure you're not scratching the acrylic, especially on the design because that can transfer to your mold. So you just wanna make sure you're careful when you do that. But yeah, I was doing it even for like these little pieces down here. I was scratching it um, with my fingernail, trying to get off and this takes a while. So <laughs> just so you know, but like that. If you're gonna be following along with me, I'm gonna put my gloves on um, just because when you touch silicone, it's the same thing as touching resin. It could be toxic and harmful to your skin, your eyes, and you don't want to breathe it in. So you want to practice that same safety that you practice with resin. So also having, being in a well-ventilated space, so I have my window open, of course. Um, but also, if you're following along with me, I have a jar here that I'm going to be putting my silicone in. I have this silicone stirring stick as well. I have some rice here so we can measure how much silicone we're going to need from this housing here. Um, I have the silicone I'm going to be using. <laughs> it's a mess. Um, I've used the silicone so far twice now. Um, it's Alumalite's newest mold maker or newest silicone called Amazing Mold Maker. And basically this is supposed to be fast or it is fast curing silicone just like resin. So it's part A, part B and you mix it one by one and then you have six to eight minutes to work with it and this can go down especially since it's during that summertime so it's hot humid so that could be as easy as like five four three minutes depending on how hot it is um, and then the mold timing only takes 30 minutes to the mold which is crazy so if you're selling molds this may be a quick turnaround for you to be able to get them out of that housing fast and on to the next and then they fully cure in 24 hours. And also this mixing container here is also from Alumalite. So they sell these containers. This is the smallest one that they have. And since I'm an affiliate of Alumalite, you can use my code WISHES10 to get 10% off your total order at their website. So you can buy mixing containers, silicone, resin, and get 10% off that total order there. And so you saw this red color, it cures this red color here. So if you're looking for something that you can change and make your own color, you're gonna wanna look at a different silicone from Alumilite. I believe it's their Plat 25. I'll be sure to leave either a photo or leave it in the description. As well as all these other things that I'm showing here and telling you about, I'll try my best to leave in the description. Oh, and then one of the other things when working with the silicone is that the silicone can stain, as you can see, like these, my mats. It can stain even like other silicone stirring sticks that I've used. I mean, you could try to get this off, but it does stain, as well as like staining your clothes that you're wearing if you get any on of it, um, any furniture that you have. So just keep that in mind if you do get this silicone that you have to be careful working with it. I mean, just with working with resin, you don't want that in your hair, you don't want that on your skin, you don't want it on your clothes. It's not good for it. 
But first, before I even start pouring silicone, I want to make sure that I put rice in this piece so that I can measure how much silicone I actually need to use. So this is the rice method. You have some rice and you pour it in here and you cover it and that'll, and then you take the rice from in here, you put it in the jar and you see how much it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna put rice on the house in there. And this is mainly done so you don't have a lot of um, leftover silicone or even some people use it when it comes to resin pieces so they don't have leftover resin. So you wanna make sure your design, that um, middle part is completely covered. All right, and then once you feel like it's covered all the way with rice, like I said before, you're going to go ahead and pour that in. And from here we can see that there's actually, it's not filling up that much. So what I might do is, since it's not that much silicone that we need, I might actually um, take the two other pieces that I have here and start taking this tape off of them and actually get them ready for some silicone as well just because I want to make sure that I can actually use the silicone since this isn't, I'm not gonna be able to pour and measure this well, but I think I could do two ounces total and cover them all. So I'm gonna come back with all of these taken off and then we're gonna start pouring our silicone in for one for part B and one for part A, or one for part A, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I am back now. I took the tape off the celestial puppy and the celestial pig. So we are ready to now put silicone in this container and start stirring to pour it into our housing that we have here. So like I said before, make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area. So I have mine from the window. Um, make sure that you put your gloves on and that you also put your mask on. You wanna make sure that these are dust free as much as you can, as well as your container. Um, it just helps with any like bubbles and stuff getting trapped and also like the way your mold comes out. Um, you don't want any like dust or hairs or anything that end up showing up on your mold. Uh, now I have my mask on, so I'm gonna be sounding a bit different, a bit harder to hear. So I apologize for that. But I did, I did the rice method as well for the puppy and the pig, and it still comes out about just needing that two ounce on our cup here. So I'm going to be taking side A and pouring it all the way to one ounce and taking side B and pouring it up to two ounces. Now to make it more accurate, you can measure them in different containers. I just find it easier to do it in one container. That way I don't have to worry about a second container being dirty and having to scrape out stuff. I just want to pour it in and then stir it as fast as I can before anything starts curing. So I'm going to go ahead, take side A, pour slowly just to make sure you don't pour too much. You want to make sure that you pour as accurate as you can as it can mess up like the curing process of how the mold is. So once we have it measured out, you're going to want to start stirring. I'm going to start stirring fast because this has a quick cure time to start pouring it in your mold. You want to make sure that it doesn't cure on you. So I know with resin you don't want to stir fast, but with this you want to make sure you're getting through it quick. And you want it to all be mixed up so you shouldn't see any white by the end of your stirring. And you want to make sure you're scraping those sides, getting the middle, high degassing so it should pop those bubbles by itself. With it being humid and hot, this makes the curing time go up so much faster. And if you feel like it's ready to be poured now, it's all mixed up well, start pouring it into your mold. And I recommend to pour from the side and let it slowly fill in. But since we're pouring in three molds, I'm gonna try to cover as much as I can. And I wonder if I have enough now. Oops, I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring and the pig.
now I'm going to start pouring in the puppy. I might have to do a second one just because I think it's starting to cure too fast and I don't I ended up not having enough even though I measured it I guess I needed to have a little bit more but you can see here it's already cured up so it works really fast it may be good for the first one but as you can see we have here this one is still not filled correctly so the dog one may not turn out correctly but these just need maybe a little bit more silicone to get covered completely. I'm going to go ahead and make up another batch of the same and we'll start pouring it again. Okay, so I mixed up a second batch that I'm now going to start pouring into the puppy and some of those leftover areas. So definitely not coming out as clean as I want it to. Um, we're gonna have a lot of overspill and it looks like a lot of unevenness that I'm worried about. I don't know how this is gonna come out. It's not a flat mold at all. Okay, so I am back. It's been 30 minutes, so these molds can now be demolded. Um, since the Amazing Mold Maker cures really fast, as you could tell, um, I ended up messing these up, so these are a failure. Um, but that's okay. Um, it wasted some silicone trying to do it, but we'll see if maybe I can still use these molds, but stuff like that is messed up. It's uneven. Even this, it's uneven like in that part. It's more big. I think this is the only one where I think I can kind of use it. I mean, a little bit right there is kind of up, but I think for the most part it is flat. Um, this really sucks, but I mean, mistakes happen all the time. I should have focused on one and then worked on the others and then mixed more silicone if I needed to. I tried doing the rice method and measured it out. I guess that didn't work out so well for me. It may have worked for if I did it for two of them, but definitely not for three. Maybe I just needed a little bit more than I thought I needed um, from doing that method. So just know we make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. Um, just you have to try again and see how that works. I'm definitely, after demolding this, I'm going to mix up more silicone. And I'll show on video me doing that and pouring it into the mold and trying again and see if we can um, actually get some flat looking molds. But yeah, I figured I can leave this failure in the video because not a lot of times, as I know people like to say, is you don't see a lot of the failures or like a lot of the low lights. You only see people's highlights and people doing it in one go, but you don't see what happens. and. I don't make molds every day. Um, I definitely don't even work with molds like that. Um, it's been a while since I even worked with this silicone and this is the first silicone I ever worked with. And it cures fast, so it's just a lot of things against me, but all you can really do is try and for what it is, I, we're gonna see how it turns out. So we're gonna go ahead and just go with the biggest one. Oh, and there we go. Oh, as we can see, we have some bubbles in there, so definitely didn't turn out as we would want it to. Have some bubbles in the eyes areas, which won't work out. But first mold, some bubble in my name, the W part. This is like a C grade mold, maybe even worse, just because it's not really usable. It has a lot of bubbles in it. We're going to look at the pig now, which I'm really concerned. I know this isn't going to lay flat just because of this part. I actually got my glove on it. Um, when I think I was messing with the puppy one, it just ended up messing the whole thing up. And again, we have some more bubbles here. Yeah, it just looks like we're having issues with some bubbles. Again. It's mainly in the engravings. So I wonder if I need to brush the engravings first before I even pour silicone onto it. I'm, I know people do that, but I'm only, I'm just really scared it's going to cure super fast and I'm going to try to brush it and then I'm going to have issues with filling it up all the way. But I think I may try to do that as well. Try to pour one at a time and try to brush on top of them and see how that goes. Trial and error, we're going to see how this works out. Let's see how the bunny turned out. 
Um, actually, a lot better than the two. I mean, we still have a bubble in the eye, but at least this side is kind of usable. You still have some of those holes there. Yeah, that's how some of our fell molds came out. Um, I'm gonna try to do it again. We're gonna see how that I goes. I forgot to also mention with like the leftover silicone, I leave the stick in there so I can easily just remove it like that. Even this other container that I have here, you can easily just with your gloves, move it along and take it off. It's easier with the stirring stick just because you're able to get the whole thing out and not just pieces like this. All right, so it's time for us to do a take two and see about doing this differently. I have the silicone brush here that I'm gonna be using to brush some of that silicone onto the molds. I'm gonna stir it as slow and fast as I can. Try to make sure that I have as many bubbles as before, but still going fast enough that it doesn't cure on me. So take some of this and brush on there. There we go. Then it's time to pour. Let it level itself up. Do this, help some of those bubbles get up, pop them. Move on to the next one if we can. like it's enough so we got two done that looked pretty good we're gonna so pretty even there for the most part so now lastly all we have to do is work on this one it seems like the brushing technique is working so far so just going to let this little bit if anything that we have in here cure up and going to move on to using a different container now I know. I'm gonna cover the puppy engravings to make sure hopefully we don't get those bubbles like before as well as with my name and there we go in 30 minutes and we'll see how they turn out compared to the ones we did last time okay so we are back and ready to demold these molds here and see how they came out compared to <laughs> the molds we messed up over there. Um, let's first start, I guess, with more of that overspilled mold. We can kind of go in the order of the ones we did last time. And look at that, it actually came out really well. I mean, we see a little bit right there on the, the above the nose on the puppo right there, but compared to last time, it looks so much better. Um, I definitely think using that brush and brushing it on the engravings worked out better. So I may need to make a new one just to make up for that, but I think any doming will cover that issue there. Even look at my name, it's fine on there. Oh, I'm in love. Just to show you how the last one came out, this is how the fell came out. So, so let's now do the pig. Here's how the pig looks. Oh, it's all glossy. No bubbles from what I can see. It just looks great. So definitely, if you're doing this or any type of silicone and you have engravings like that, use a brush, learn from my mistakes. And then we'll move on to the last pair. Look at that, it came out good. A little bit of issues right there on the hat in that left corner there but I don't even really care. I know I can fix that with some doming and it won't be a problem. All I know is I went from so many holes in the engravings and in the mold, and now they look like that, that I'm just happy. Like, look at this, this was the pig from before. Like, that looks like a hot mess. And then we have this. 
Look at that change. That's crazy. And even this is the bunny before. That was a mess. Look at that. Oof. Got some holes there. This looks kind of messy. But then we have this bunny looking good. I'm so happy with how they came out. And I hope you really enjoyed this video, especially seeing like my mistakes and then seeing me overcome them and actually creating some good usable molds that actually look good. Um, some of it will have to be cleaned up on the sides there, but definitely so much better than the ones we did before. I'm just really happy with how they came out and I hope you enjoyed watching my process, seeing me make these mistakes um, and taking some of these tips and even wanting to try out that amazing mold maker for yourself. Um, I just hope that was helpful in some type of way, enjoyable in some type of way. And just let me know what you thought in the comments, um, any other tricks when it comes to mold making that you have for me. Just let me know. I love replying back to you guys in the comments there. I may not always get to it that same day, but I always try to get to you as soon as possible. And overall, I thank you so much for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.